Hey everyone, Earl Chazon here and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to design a killer sales page. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to learn the best practices on how I design a highly converting sales page. And for those of you who don't know, my name is Earl Chazon and I'm a self-taught designer. My core focus is UX design and conversion rate optimization. And let me show you the deck that I created for this video. Let's roll! So who is this video for? Now, if you're a business owner that has been frustrated because your designer doesn't understand your marketing goals, or if you're a designer who's frustrated because your client keeps on asking revisions after revisions, I want you guys to know that it's not your fault. It's just a miscommunication because there are terms that only a marketer or a business owner would understand. And the same goes with us designers. There are terms that we're the only one who would understand. Now, my goal for this video is to fill the gap of communication when a business owner and a designer collaborate in a project. When you're designing a conversion-driven sales page, there are three questions that need to be answered. Why do we need to know these questions? Because it makes the collaboration between a business owner and a designer easier, and these questions will help us to understand how our target audience behaves when they're browsing through a sales page and I'll try to explain everything later. The first question that needs to be answered when designing a sales page is, what does it do? In today's world, getting our audience's attention is getting harder and harder. We have to remember that in order for a brand to succeed, we need to day trade attention, and answering this question will position your offer to be clear and attract your dream customers. Now, there's this thing called 5-second rule, and it says that a user should get what the brand is solving or offering in just 5 seconds. Now, for business owners, this is the part of the sales page wherein you need to craft a clear offer. This will be your headline, and I recommend creating a headline that focuses on results. And here's the formula for a result-driven headline. I learned this from Russell Brunson, who is the CEO of ClickFunnels. So the formula says how to result they desire the most without the thing they fear most. And here's an example of a clear headline. How to make a quick $10k this weekend by flip, uh, flipping your first house on eBay without getting a loan from the bank. Now, for designers, this is the hero section. You need to make the font size big and make sure to include a compelling image that is relatable to the headline. And of course, a clear call to action. The next question that needs to be answered is, is it for me? This is the section where you surface their doubts and alleviate their fears by letting your users know that your offer will solve their problem. Now, a common practice that I've noticed from other SaaS companies is they just list down the features of their app. They don't know how to write benefits, and I have a guide that I follow every time I design a sales page. And here's the guide that I recommend. So the format is, you're probably the problem they are facing, which is why we, the features that solve their problem. And here's an example for a benefit. You're probably having difficulties navigating eBay and it's keeping you stuck, which is why we included a video guide showing you the step-by-step -step process on how to list and flip your house on eBay. So for every feature that you have, just use the guide that I shared with you so you'll be able to position your brand as a solution to their problem. For designers, don't forget to pair the benefit text with a compelling icon or image that is super relatable to the feature. The last question that needs to be answered is, does it work? This is probably the easiest question to be answered but also the easiest to be taken for granted. Now, why do I say it's the easiest question? Because this question can just be answered by testimonials from the customers and also logos of the companies who use the software or the logos of the companies who are vouching for the service. And the next question that I have is, why did I say it's also the easiest to be taken for granted? Because based on observation, a lot of SaaS companies doesn't really know how to use the testimonials. 
and I believe that testimonials are powerful because it's a great persuasion tool when used correctly. Some bad practices that I've observed from sales pages is that they think that putting a lot of good testimonials is already enough. Testimonials should also have a format and should be related to what the service does and also related to the benefits. Now, a testimonial should be formatted this way. The problem they are facing and the feature that solve their problem. And here's another example that is related to eBay again. It was my first time to use eBay and it was confusing, but I was able to list my first house by following their step-by-step -step video guide. It was super easy to follow. Now, if you're gonna ask a testimonial from your user or users, I recommend asking them these three questions. And the questions are, what was a recurring problem that you wanted to solve? What was the one feature from our service that solved that recurring problem? And how did it help you to solve the problem? So yeah, um, that's it. So just a summary for this video. When you're designing a sales page, you just have to answer these three questions. The first question is, what does it do? Next is, is it for me? And lastly, does it work? Because answering these questions will help you map out the sections necessary to design a killer sales page. So that's it for now. I hope you learned something from this video. And guys, thanks for watching and see you on my next video. Bye. If you got value from this video, do me a favor, please like and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click that notification bell. And if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Again, this is Errol reminding you to keep those conversions rolling.